Hi, I'm Luke McIntosh, creator of becomeabassist.com, and in this lesson, you're gonna learn a strategy for learning how to sing and play bass at the same time. Now this lesson actually comes from a question asked by a Become Bassist subscriber named Sammy from California who asks, Lately I've been practicing singing and playing, but it seems I can only really do it in simple songs. The more complicated the song gets, the harder it is to sing because I focus more on the notes than the words. Is this something I can learn with practice, or is this something that some people can do and others can't? This is a great question. I love this question, and the short answer is yes. This is totally a skill that you can learn. In fact, nobody is born with the ability to sing and play bass at the same time. It's something that you learn how to do. It's a skill, and skills can be learned, just like uh, tying your shoelaces or brushing your teeth. Whether you're singing lead vocals or backup vocals, it can actually be quite tricky to sing and play bass at the same time for a number of reasons. Now, if you're watching this lesson on YouTube uh, and you are curious about why it's a little bit trickier than uh, for us than say it is for rhythm guitar players or even drummers, uh, just head on over to the site, click the link underneath this lesson and you can read up all about the why. This lesson though, we're focusing on the how. How do you do it? How do you sing and play bass at the same time? Well, the trick is in making just one of the parts automatic, either the vocal melody or the bass line. Now, when I say make it automatic, I mean that you know it so well that you don't even have to think about it at all. That means you know it so well that you can think about other things at the same time. So, with that in mind, which one would you rather think about more, the bass line or the vocal melody? Which one do you want to give your attention and your efforts to, bass line or the vocal melody? When it comes down to it, you probably want to make the bass line automatic. You want to think about the bass line as little as possible while you're singing. Now, although the bass line is incredibly important, most of the time, your audience, the people listening to you, are probably going to be listening to the vocals, not necessarily the bass part. So it makes sense to focus most of your energy and most of your efforts on the thing that's going to connect with the majority of people. Now, obviously, the trickier either the bass line or melody is, the harder it's going to be to get the two things to line up. But for a pretty easy example, a good way to get started, let's have a look at U2's With or Without You. Now the bass line in this song is fairly simple. It's just four notes, D, A, B, and G, one bar a piece, all in eighth notes. Now forgive the uh, six string right now, <laughs> my four string's actually in the shop, but we can make do with this, it's gonna be fine. So the bass line is very simple, just this. So D, two, three, four, down to A, open A there, up to B for a bar, and then G two, three, four. Very, very simple bass line, nothing to it. It's very, very functional, it serves the song well. Now because the bass line is very simple, we can make it automatic fairly easily. We can put it on autopilot. And the way to do that is by practicing it and by gradually thinking about it less and less and less. Now what does that mean for us? Well, when you're trying to learn a bass line like this, at the very start, you're probably focused on playing the right notes, making sure you're playing the right rhythms, making sure you're not changing too early, making sure you're not kind of messing up. You might forget what order the notes come in, you might be changing a little bit early or a little bit late, and if that happens, you're going to be focusing intently on making sure that the bass line sounds good. But slowly though, as you get more kind of comfortable, you'll think about it a little bit less and less every time until it's automatic. Eventually, you'll get to the stage where you'll play the bass line and not have to think about it at all. So you could play the bass line, for example, and have a conversation with someone. You could have a conversation about what you had for breakfast, plans for the rest of the day, what you're working on in your bass lines. Like right now, for example, this bass line's still happening, but I'm still talking to you. I'm not kind of actively thinking about this bass line. It's become automatic. When you get to this point, the next logical step is to add the vocal melody. Makes sense, right? Uh, now, if the bass line is fully automatic, it should be fairly easy for you to kind of overlay the melody on top of it and give that all of your attention, but it can still be challenging. One thing I see a lot of people do is uh, forget to change notes. So in this case, the first lyrics are, uh, see the stone, the stone set in her eyes, they'll do this. See the stone set, and they'll just forget to change the notes like that because they're focused too much on the melody. Now, how do you fix this? Well, you can ask yourself the question, at what point in the lyrics does the bass line change? Makes sense, right? So at what point in the lyrics can we take our cue and then change the bass line? So in this case, we're going from D down to A, 
And our first line is, see the stone set in her eyes. And if you listen very closely, you'll hear that the bass line actually changes on the right after the start of the word stone. So we hear the word stone, and then we change our bass line immediately after the start of that word. So we get this. See the stone, change right after the stone there. A bit slower, it sounds like this. See the stone, change there right after the word stone. Can you see that? Can you see how you're taking your cue from the lyrics in this case? In this example, the melody is actually leading the bass line in a way. The melody, the vocal melody kind of anticipates the chord change and then the bass line catches up to it kind of half a beat later. If you know this, if you know how the vocal melody and the bass line relate, how they're related to each other, then you can easily coordinate your fingers and your voice so they're both doing the right thing at the right time. So for, for this example, we get this. See the thorn set in your eyes. See the thorn twist in your sides. Do you see how the vocal melody is leading the bass line? The vocal melody changes and then the bass line catches up to it just half a beat later. If you can find a way to help yourself visualize and conceptualize the relationship between vocal melody and bass line, it can make it super easy for you to sing and play bass at the same time. In terms of how to practice this, I recommend starting quite slowly. If it's a particularly complicated bass line or melody, I recommend starting painfully slowly. If you can't play it at a slow tempo, you won't be able to play it at a fast tempo. So let's do that with this song right here. I've got my metronome set to 48 beats per minute, which is quite slow. So. See the stone set in her eyes. See the thorn twist in your side. So it is quite slow in this particular case. The upside of doing this is that you get a very, very clear picture of how the bass line relates to the melody. You'll see exactly when to change, what to change to, and it all becomes very, very clear when you slow things right down. Practicing super slowly is a very, very powerful tool that you can use to develop that skill of singing and playing at the same time. Now this U2 example, it's pretty simple. It's just the first step in uh, developing that skill of playing and singing at the same time. But if you really want to develop that skill and kind of get your playing and coordination chops together, then I've put together a free seven step guide that'll help you do exactly that. The guide is basically a group of seven songs that get progressively harder in terms of how to sing and play at the same time. But if you get through all of them, then you'll have absolutely no problems in tackling probably 90 or 95% of the songs that you could ever want to sing and play at the same time. You can think of it as kind of like a singing and playing coordination workout routine, and it's completely free. To get it, simply put your name and email address in the box underneath this lesson if you're on the BAB website. If you're on YouTube, click the link in the description and it'll take you to the right place in order to get the seven step guide to singing and playing. But to recap, we talked about how nobody is born with the ability to sing and play bass at the same time. It's a skill that you can acquire and then further develop. You learned that the key to doing this was to make one of the parts automatic so you can kind of file it away and focus all your energy on the thing that's going to connect with most people, which in our case is probably the vocals. So we make our bass line automatic so we can focus all our energy and efforts on our vocal melody. You also learned that once you've made your bass line automatic, it's usually fairly easy to put the melody on top of that. But you learned that if it was a little bit complicated, the trick was to take it painfully slowly and see exactly how the bass line and vocal melody related to each other, when the notes are together, when they're apart, and when they change. Thank you so much for watching. I can't tell you how much I appreciate the company. My name's Luke McIntosh, creator of becomeabassist.com, and I'll see you very, very soon.